This meeting is being okay. recorded. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. Welcome, welcome. It is Saturday, January 15th. We're going to be posting this in February. February 20th is going to be posted. So it'll still be nice and cold. And we are here with Cassie. How do you say your last name? Workington. Workington. I didn't even, I was like, Ugh. Cassie. <laughs> I was like, what is that name? Workington. So I had a, my uh, previous last name was Ungaret. Oh, another one. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Work, work, ing, ton. Well, it's just like it sounds. It exactly. Just, it just seems like it seems really hard, but it's really. It seems not- more intimidating than it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. So you are a sugar glider mentor and uh, you have been doing it for how long? To be honest, I don't even remember. (laughs) You remember? Yeah, that's, that's going to be me. I mean, me, if I were interviewed, I'd be the worst interviewee ever. (laughs) I don't know. I don't freaking know. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's been over. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been just over a year. I, I'm trying to think of like how long I've officially been a mentor, you know, versus what I was doing before. Cause I, like I was doing stuff before and then I had when guardians asked me to join as a mentor for their program. And so it's like, it kind of, all the lines kind of blur. <laughs> you do, you do, but shoot. I mean, you, sorry, I'm going to take this off. It's really, it's really hot in here. And I was running to get here. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, so you, um, what did you do before? Tell us, tell us, Cassie, tell us. Before, before, before the glider team, before. before you were mentoring before what? the gliders. Oh, um, so I, for the last few years, I've been running my small business, Geeky Gliders. And making uh, cage sets and toys and all sorts of fun stuff for gliders. Um, Prior to that, I had a completely different job in a completely different field as a, um, I was working in the media as a journalist and audience analyst and social media, basically social media uh, engagement specialist. And so I did something completely different than I do now. Yes, <laughs> I do remember this. Yes. So I, I went from all sorts of journalism media to making toys <laughs> for Aww. little TV <laughs> Yes. For those of you watching this, uh, I had interviewed Cassie a while back and um, my internet, I had, I think I had three in a month that didn't record. I almost lost my mind. I was ready to kill myself. <laughs> I was just going to jump off of the building or something. I was like, <laughs> I can't, I can't. I, just did this. I was like mortified. As, and I remember you talking now that you're saying about the social media thing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Do you remember? So is that a good one that I showed you? Ring lights, ring lights are great. They're fantastic. Um, especially when you have the backlight, like you do kind of like I do too. You can see like the, yeah, you know, the, the window in the background, mm-hmm. having the ring light will help kind of counteract. Um, so you don't have to, it'll, it'll lighten up your face without having to worry too much about, you know, right. The, Partition. Right. So you, that reminds me, I got to write that down. Um, so you did social media and all this stuff. Then you decided, what made you decide to be like, hey, I don't want to do this. I want to make glider sets. And like, that's, very, that's like a big jump. Like, <laughs> it is a big jump. Um, so I ended up in, in 2018, I left the media and in, media industry, uh, mainly due to burnout. Um, it's, it's a hard industry to be in. I was in it for about seven years. And when you start out with 
breaking news and public safety and then you're reading all of this stuff every day and then you get into the social media management where you're basically the voice of of a company and you're dealing with um a lot of complaints you know mainly complaints um it gets really hard it it it's hard not to especially for people like me who are very empathetic to to kind of feel that you know even though it's it's not you it's hard yeah. not to feel that i know um, so i it i got just, really it, it just you can't breathe sometimes it exactly it gets really suffocating and so i i needed a break i needed something different than the daily news industry to kind of just for my own mental health sake i needed to get out of it um Originally, when I left, uh, my plan was to either uh, start my own blog or kind of like e-magazine, um, actually based on the wedding business, because I have had previous experience doing similar things in the past, uh, or I was going to go work for a company and kind of run social media, kind of what the what they would call a social media manager job right now but a lot of it's community engagement and audience analytics and and kind of looking at the big picture um so i was taking some time after i left to figure out what i was going to do um and i i couldn't figure out what to do and in in that time frame my uh, my husband and i were living in utah and all of these pieces kind of came together where we were suddenly able to move to the state of Washington, which was where we wanted to move to eventually. And we just didn't think it would happen that quickly. And so once we realized we could move to Washington, all of a sudden everything became fast paced. And my, my thought process of what I'm gonna do for a job kind of went on the back burner and we started focusing on the move. And within 30 days, we came out to Washington, found a house, put an offer on a house, went back, prepped our house, sold our house, and moved out to Washington. And just before we moved out to Washington, we had started kind of toying with the idea of getting gliders because we knew they would be legal in Washington. And and they're, they're legal in Utah, except in like the main part of Salt Lake County. And I think that's mainly because it's like very city downtown-ish kind of a thing. Um, so again, the original plan was to just get them when we moved out here, but we ended up picking up one before we ended up coming out who, you know, ended up needing, it was a rehome that was a single and really needed buddies. So we picked her up before we moved out here. So my husband came out and had a job. And once he got started with his job, I was left to basically prep the house. And once I was done doing that, which didn't take long, I was left with myself and the animals trying to figure out what I was gonna do for a job. <laughs> and so um, as I got involved in the sugar glider community, I met some incredible people and started realizing, oh, I want to make my own toys for my gliders. I kind of like this. And and I, I'm i a crafty person. And and so I'm like, oh, I could sew my own stuff. You know, I've, I've done this for a long time. And and like within, within like a month of making stuff for my own gliders, I was like, yeah, I want to do this as a business. And my husband's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I could do this. I think I could do this. And so that was in, let's see, that was in March. We moved in February. I started looking at doing it in March. Um, I started asking about testing in April and getting everything prepped in April. And then I was approved after testing in July Aww. of 2019. And so um, I've been plugging along ever since. <laughs> that is so awesome. And, and you feel like you've made the right path with the glider toys and stuff? 
Oh yeah. It's, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's not something that's going to pay your mortgage. It's not something that's going to pay your major bills. Um, I, I love it because I'm a huge, my, my brain is like creativity mode. And so for me, this is fun. I enjoy this. This is when I see customers send me pictures of gliders interacting with the toys I've made or the pouches I've made and stuff that to me is just so rewarding there are times I I miss some of the other things but I would not give this up for it so I I toy around with the idea of doing like part-time social media management but I would not give up doing glider stuff I just wouldn't wonderful well, you're a blessing to the glider community. So thank you for thank you. using your <laughs> gifts to take care of them. Everybody can look back behind you and see that <laughs> there's a lot going on right there. It's organized chaos in my office. And that's just a small, tiny chunk of it. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Like I literally, I don't know. I am, God bless you guys, because I could not do that. <laughs> like I would lose my mind because I like simple, clean. Yeah. And I like getting rid of everything. Like yep. my mom hates like clean because I- if you like clean and and yeah, this is this is not the thing for for you because just just drilling into plastic gives you all those teeny tiny pieces of plastic that just end up everywhere, and it doesn't matter how much you clean it, it still ends up everywhere and. If you're cutting yeah. with fleece, fleece dust is everywhere. It just becomes part of your home. It's like litter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could imagine. I could imagine. I'm already like, uh, feel like I'm, I hoard glider stuff. So I've been trying to, the stuff I don't even like, half of it I haven't even used. So I've been like sending it out or whatever, like to people. Cause I'm like, I gotta get rid of some of this stuff. There's so much, yeah. there's so much. <laughs> so, um, Wow, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for doing that. We'll definitely, we'll definitely get you highlighted here. February twentieth, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so, um, when did you? Who who initially asked you to be on uh, as a mentor? Like, how did that happen? So you okay? So let's back up. You got your glider when you went to Washington, and that was how long ago? That was February of 2019. Okay. And then you, when did you get on the glider groups? Um, I started getting into the glider groups in February. So we, we spent, so, well, actually I take that back. We started looking into the glider groups in December because we wanted to do research and figure out if this was going to be the right decision for us. Um, my husband loves to research and I, we're both animal lovers. I've had exotics before, um, but sugar gliders were very new to us. And so we weren't exactly sure what we were getting into. So we spent quite a bit of time researching. Um, and that's why we decided to wait till we got out here to have gliders basically pick gliders up here because we didn't want to have to drag them on a 17 hour trip, you know, from Utah to, to Washington. But when we had, when, when the, the girl got a hold of us with Knox and, and, you know, she's just this little eight month uh, out of pouch Joey, who's by herself and has always been by herself. And, you know, she's getting to the point where she needs a buddy and, you know, she's a couple hours away and, and her, previous owner couldn't get her a buddy it's it's hard to say no you know so Knox yeah, Knox buddy. was officially our first and we just went and picked her up and she was a trooper going <laughs> through the drive with us that is so good yeah. so how old was she was she little one yeah she was she was only eight months out of pouch when we got her and her her buddies were approximately the same. So they were all around eight months out of pouch. Right. Um, so we got Knox, Gidget, and Bellatrix all at this approximately. Like, Bellatrix? Within a couple of days. I love it. Oh, that and name. she lived up to that name. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we hadn't met her before. 
That is a great name. Yeah, she oh, lives up to that name. My goodness. That's hilarious. So you guys were already on the groups. Did you um, find Sheer Glider Guardians right away or did you just have a whole bunch of groups? Guardians we found pretty quickly. Um, we I joined a bunch of groups to start out with, but Guardians was one of the first. Um, that was pre the massive waves of people joining over the last couple of years. So um, it hadn't quite, I mean, it had grown, but it, it wasn't like growing exponentially like it has been right. like the last like year and a half. Um, so we joined Guardians and uh, got a lot of information from Guardians. Um, at the time, I had no idea they even had a mentor program. So I didn't have a mentor to start with. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the whole concept was very new to me, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah, I found that out much later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> me too. Um, so how did you get hooked up with the mentor program? What made you want to be a mentor? Um, so one of, uh, my fellow local gals here, uh, is part of the mentor group. And so she reached out to me and she's like, hey, you know, you've had gliders for a while. Um, I know you do really well with your gliders. I'm wondering if you might be interested in being a mentor. Uh, I, I wasn't sure at first because I didn't want to commit to something because I, I, you know, I'd had gliders for a while, but it's one thing when you own gliders and you're making decisions for your gliders. It's another when you're giving advice to someone else for their gliders, especially when it comes to like situations that could be emergency or getting close to emergency. So uh, like my, my confidence level was like, am I ready for this? Can I handle this? Um, so after talking with, uh, you know, Sandra and Guy and, and Jessica and, and kind of uh, talking with them about what the role would entail, I felt comfortable enough going ahead and, and becoming a mentor. And those, those first few were, were intimidating. I, none of them had anything super dramatic that they needed, but it was more of a mental thing for me of, you know, you really have to step up into the role of being confident in the answers you're giving. Um, and my, my disclaimer to all of my mentees to begin with is, look, I will never tell you that I have all the answers, but if I don't have an answer, I will certainly look for one or find one for you. Um, because I can't, I can't guarantee that I'm going to have all the knowledge. I haven't run into all the situations, but there's going to be someone who has. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of made it a little easier. Right. Yeah. And I, uh, I love our little group. Like I've said in other videos, like, because we, I definitely don't know a lot of things. And so it's nice to be able to reach out to the group and have someone um, jump in. And I, I know I've also said this, but um, doing the group chat when I'm not even going to be like their mentor, like mm -hmm. if I give them to somebody else and then I get to learn. So maybe exactly. the next one is, is easier or something. I, I don't know. The last year, like the last, yeah, the last year has been an interesting one for, for me personally, because I've had more experience in medical situations now with gliders than I had ever had in the past. Um, so it's been, and, and it's been uh, extreme cases too. Not, nothing like <laughs> nothing, like we've had some small things like impacted impacted glands and stuff we've had some of those but um we had not this last christmas but the christmas before we had gambit who had this the accident after his neuter um who had the severe burns and so trying to treat a glider who suffered from severe burns over the face uh was definitely very very difficult 
very, very hard. Like it's, it's a quick adjustment. So dealing with that. And then two months later, we had a Joey who became very, very ill within two days of coming out of pouch. Um, I've spent a lot of time over the last year with a small group of people studying the issues of bacterial gastroenteritis with lighters, which is a, a thing that's popping up all across the community and we're seeing it in Joey's and now in two to three year old gliders. Uh, we've had I, my first experience with a necrotic penis. So that's been an interesting one to deal with because we have, we're a small hobby breeder. So one of our boys had a little bit too much fun, hurt himself. And so, um, for, for one night we were basically lubing up our glider every 45 minutes until we got to the doctor the next day. And then every four hours, Godric and I had this lovely little one-on-one -on -one where, you know, it's like, you're having to pay attention to, to medical issues to make sure that the extended life of your glider is taken care of. And, and so as I'm getting some of these, these mentees now that are coming that have bigger issues, like I've had some that have come to me with um, abscess issues or uh, who have bacterial gastroenteritis or dysbiosis or some of these bigger issues, it's a little easier now to be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Here's what you need to, to, you know, go say when you're at the vet, here's what you're going to look for specifically. Here's the kind of medications you're going to look for. And it's so much easier now than it was to start with. <laughs> that is so good. Yes. I, I have not, see, it's great to know that like, whatever anybody's faith is or whatever, like that everybody has their own God given gifts. Yeah. Like I haven't been giving, given any, I've been doing this almost 20 years and I haven't had those kind of issues. Like, yeah. thank goodness. I've had some medical <laughs> ones, but nothing like that. Like, I'm just like, holy smokes. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's been interesting, especially with the uh, bacterial gastroenteritis with gliders. Um, we see it a lot in joeys because just like babies, they don't have the immune system uh, that's built up. And so there's, there's a small group of us that have been pulling data. We've been trying to go through and pay attention. And, and there's a couple of, of uh, mentors actually and guardians who we, we look out for these cases. And, and when I, I talked to um, the admins of guardians when this first came up and I was like, look, this is what we're starting to see. If you guys see these cases, send them my way because it's so unusual. It's not your typical case. And it's, We've got some data, but there's so little data on sugar gliders, um, especially on sugar glider gut health, that uh, we're finding that we have to collect it ourselves. And unfortunately, there is no there's no ability to collect a large enough sample size for, say, like a study. You'd need hundreds of gliders. Right. And you need very specific circumstances, but we can take uh, fecal gram stains. We can take necropsy information. We can take all of that. Um, I mean, we hope that we don't get to a point with our mentees where it gets to a necropsy. We hope that we can just stay at the fecal gram stain area and, and move from there. But um, being able to collect that information is crucial and, and being able to look and help people and guardians um, and, and kind of help steer them in the right direction since there's not much info out there is, is big. It is. And it's, it's great that you're out there doing that. Um, so so you, um, what is, tell me one hilarious 
either a funny story, a sad story, or something that really stands out to you since you've been with gliders? So basically any story. Pretty much so any story. Sad, like one that stands much. out, like not just a normal, like one of your like ones that really stand out in your head. Okay. Um, one that stands out for me that, that truly, it embodies to me what gliders are like and why they're community animals. Um, so Gambit, for those who didn't hear Gambit's story, Gambit went in for a neuter neuter was done perfect neuter went perfectly um but unfortunately because it's a surgery just like any other surgery since there's oxygen and they're taking a glider off of oxygen there's always a risk um and any kind of little spark can cause an oxygen mask or an oxygen tank to ignite and so when they were getting him off of oxygen, there was a spark, whether it be from static from the clothing or, or what, they weren't sure. Um, but he did suffer from some pretty severe burns. And so when we got him, this was all during COVID too. So we couldn't, you know, we couldn't necessarily go see him right away after he was injured. Um, but once we went to go pick him up a few hours later, after we got that call, um, they let us in and, and we were able to see him and, you know, his, his eyes are closed because they're swollen and, and he looked, I mean, he just looked, he looked bad and it just, it breaks your heart. Cause it's just like, you don't want anything to be suffering. And so he has a twin sister and I was like, I don't know how this is going to go when we go home because we knew what we had to do. We had him on pain meds. We had him on antibiotics. We had him on a silver uh, cream as well for the burns. Um, but there's only so you can't prep another glider to be like, okay, I'm bringing your brother home, but he doesn't look the same. Like you can't, you can't have that kind of a discussion with a glider. So I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be okay or if this is going to be bad. So we hesitantly brought her over to him. And at first she has this kind of like, what the, what is this kind of a look? And then she realizes it's her brother. And then it was like, it was like, it didn't matter that he looked funny. It didn't matter that he smelled funny. It didn't matter that I was disturbing them at all hours of the day to give him medication. She would cuddle up to him because he was, he was the leader at that point, but he became very insecure because of his injuries. So she stepped up and she would cuddle him to keep him warm because he was, he was missing fur. She would lead him around the cage and help because he couldn't see and so she would walk with him around the cage to kind of teach him where things were in the cage. Um, she would encourage him in so many ways and, and truly keep him going. I truly believe had he been injured and not had his sister, I don't think he would have recovered as well as he did. But that bond that they had together and the fact that she was so willing to help him along the way the entire time was absolutely phenomenal to watch we we moved that cage that hospital cage into our bedroom so that if there was any emergency situation we would hear it immediately and you know for the first few nights you're not sleeping because you're like I don't know what's going to happen and I don't know if he's gonna you know and and he you know he's like I'm just going to do whatever I'm going to want or whatever I want him you know, and, and he's up on the top of the cage and he'd get stuck because he couldn't see anything. And so she'd go rescue him and bring him back down mm -hmm. and stuff. And so for me, 
that was that was incredible. And I still get updated photos uh, from their owner. Um, his you would never, other than the external structures of his ears are are missing. You would never know that this glider had any injuries because all the fur came back in. Um, and as soon as he regained like all of his fur and his eyesight and everything was perfectly fine. Um, he stepped right back up into that role of leader and now he takes care of his sister and they are just sweet as can be. And so <laughs> to me, it's just incredible to see that community support between, between gliders. That is so sweet. That is the sweetest story I've ever heard. That is pretty It's cool. sad, but it's so sweet. <laughs> it's so sad. Broke my heart, but then to hear her, oh. I just, oh, Gambit and Rogue were just so sweet. <laughs> Gambit and Rogue? Rogue. Rogue. Oh, yeah. Rogue. I like that name. All of our, all of our Joeys end up with geeky names like so. <laughs> rogue i love it yes um wow wow yeah so, i'm gonna ask you if you have to give one piece of advice to new sugar glider owners what is it This is kind of a this is kind of a weird one because it's not something that's heard a lot and it's newer. But to me, because I because I've been so involved with medical stuff in the last year, my piece of advice to people would be when you get new sugar gliders, no matter where they come from, no whether whether they're rehome or from breeders or whether they're your first or whether you, they're your sixth or whatnot. Um, take them to the vet for their for their check and have them do a fecal gram stain, uh, just to make sure that there's no bacteria. Because when you're bringing in a new glider, uh, what we're finding is that it can come from the most sanitary of places. Um, a breeder can do everything right and it can still end up with bacterial gastroenteritis. And when that happens, it spreads and it spreads quickly. And depending on the health of the glider or the age of the glider, we're seeing a lot of gliders that are dying between ages two and four. Um, and that's young. I mean, it's one thing when we're seeing joeys and we can spot the joeys, but we're seeing a lot of gliders that are dying now between two and four. So it's, it's worth the money to get these fecal gram stains done and just make sure that your gliders don't have any bacterial issues going on in their gut. There's no other way to know um, they can act completely normal. So it just, it will save you a lot of heartache. It will save you a lot of vet bills in the future. If you do that. Great advice. That is really <laughs> good advice. Oh my gosh. So we're already to the, this has been great. This, like, <laughs> I almost feel like this is even better than our first one. Oh my God. <laughs> I think this is a win. So we're gonna go to those rapid fire questions. Yeah. If you, what would you name your autobiography? Oh goodness, I wish I could remember <laughs> what it was before. Uh, Crazy, chaotic, anxious, but 
sensible. I like it. <laughs> I would read that. <laughs> okay, next question. Favorite place of all the places you've ever been? My, my favorite place would have to be when I went with my husband to uh, Monterey Bay, Jamaica, because our hotel had like this little private little cove beach area. And I am a huge like beach person. And so when we went, it was just like, this small little area and there was hardly anybody there. And so we could just sit in this little beach with like no one there for a while and just enjoy our time. Do you, do you like, are you one of those that when you go to the beach, you read? No, I, I like to spend time in the water or, or sitting like I'll sit by the water. I, I could probably sit and read but I find myself more, I guess, fulfilled taking in everything, um, the sounds and, and the visuals to me, those are the places that calm me a lot. And so for me, it's just kind of soaking it all in. Aw, that's so nice. So your favorite <laughs> beach, you said that, that was I was so interested in your story about taking it all in and the beach and stuff. What beach? Yeah. Was it? it was in, um, it was in, I think it was Monterey Bay, Jamaica. Monterey Bay, Jamaica, Monterey Bay. I'm always looking for That's new places right. to go. Yeah, this was, this was in this little, like we went to an all-inclusive resort and literally you walk across the street and they just have like there's a, a bar out there that they'll do food and the bar and everything like that but then it's just got this little area where they maybe have max like 12 12 chairs out there because it's just so small and you can watch like the crabs and everything walking around uh -huh. on, on everything and you can just see everything going on it's really interesting yes i love that we're leaving uh, in seven days, as long as I can just get myself away from people to make sure that, because this COVID <laughs> thing's terrifying me right now. Yes. Because uh, seven days, we're leaving for Mexico. Ooh, fun. Where? The first week, we're going to Cabo. The second week, Cancun. Oh, I love Cabo. You Cabo San Lucas, or are you going yep. for, um, okay, yep. Cabo's yep. beautiful. Yeah. Yep. So I'm very excited, but I'm super like, okay, everybody just stay away from me. Like you're kind of Lysol. You're yeah. like, thanks me. I know. And I still have to work. So I'm going to be like, wear masks, wear gloves. Nobody get too close to me. I'm not hugging anybody for a week. Like I just want to get to Mexico and be in a suit and then I don't care. Yeah. Whatever, whatever happens. Yeah. Like when I'm down there, whatever. <laughs> I just want to get there. So, all right, let's see. We, I'm gonna give you one. Which question do I wanna ask you next? Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, and I already asked you that one last time, so I don't wanna ask you the same ones. Um, you have to sing karaoke. What song do you pick? I typically go for Joan Jett songs. I'm a huge karaoke fan. My best friend and I used to go to karaoke all the time. So Joan Jett was up there, Pat Benatar. Like oh, Pat Benatar. I mean, I was born in the 80s, but grew up in the 90s. So I'm a huge 80s music fan. I love 90s music too. So yeah, I just, there's something about just belting out Joan Jett or Pat Benatar that just yeah, can't beat it. I love it. Oh, that's so funny. You, I mean, you can, 
I mean, there are some fun times where you just want to throw something weird out there and you're singing Sweet Transvestite by, you know, from Rocky Horror Picture Show or something like that. It just Let's throws go. everybody off. But Let's do the time warp again. Yeah, exactly. There's like sometimes you just got to throw something weird out there or, you know, just to make sure people are paying attention or like Baby Got Back. I've done that oh, one yeah. a couple of times. People are paying attention or pour some sugar on me. Yep. <laughs> I love karaoke. It just depends on the crowd, what time of night it is, and how much I've had to drink. Yep. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's so funny. Awesome. That is awesome. That is so fun. Great. I got the right question. Okay. Yeah. Last but not least, when you are gone, what do you want to be remembered for? I just hope that in some way I have left somebody feeling a little bit better about themselves or somebody I, I'm hoping I leave something good behind I I don't need a huge legacy I don't need to leave something that I like I don't need my name to be this big old thing I, I don't I've I've never been like that I just hope that I leave something behind that actually means something, even if it's in the smallest way. So if that ends up being glider research, it's glider research. If it ends up being, I have kids and I leave something impactful with my kids, then it's that. I just want to leave something behind that is meaningful. That's awesome. I think we all want to make a difference in people's lives, especially people yeah. who mentor, um, because I mean, we're given back to try to help the gliders. Exactly. Exactly. So right now we are highlighting, right? Let me do it. Cassie. Is it Casey or Cassie? It's Casey, but I've been called Cassie all my life. So it's, it's either. <laughs> because of the one S. I it's think. the one S. Mm -hmm. uh, Casey Workington. Yes. Oh, when the crowd goes wild. <laughs> uh, don't forget to visit her page. She is the owner of Kiki Gliders. We yes, will yes. put the link in here in the in the body. Uh, if you haven't had a mentor would like one, please reach out to one of the admins. If you're looking for information, don't forget we have information in the file section of our page. There is an, a new thing now. Used to be you just go to the file section and it was there under the name. You have to actually now search for the link. So I think uh, Aaliyah was adding some stuff. So hopefully... It's easy to find. If you're having a hard time finding some information, reach out to your mentor or one of the admins. Uh, as always, happy gliding, be safe, and have an amazing balls day.